Good morning, welcome back to another video and today is another day of the weekly highlight. Now just stick around and enjoy the video. Now coming in from an update for first on our list is the Shadowlands release date. Yes, they have stated when it will roughly be released. Now this is in quarter four and this is looking more along the lines of, and if we cross reference this with all of the other releases that were in quarter four, they were November. So what we're looking at is maybe a November release, early November, around about like the 10th-ish of November for the release of Shadowlands. Now aside from that, let's jump into the main part of the video, which is basically the weekly highlight is going to be covering new profession reagents. Now these are the crafting reagents that are optional for when you're doing a standard craft and that gives you like different types of bonuses. So we are gonna be running down them all now. For the optional crafting reagents, we have for inscription, the Word of Power 4. Now this means that it actually gives you, if you use this when you're doing your crafting, a plus 20 to your eye level of that particular item. Now this is brilliant for inscription, and even on my bullet points I've even actually listed that this is definitely going to be a key item. So what I would recommend for this one is, it gives you 20 eye level on your crafting, so what is going to actually be happening, or my prediction for this one is, this is going to be one of the ones that is going to be most profitable because people are always concerned about different types of eye level for their items and if this is implemented inscription is going to be definitely a must when it comes to Shadowlands because at the end of the day this optional crafting reagent will be able to boost your eye level on all of your different pieces of gear in order to get into different areas, hence why I'm going to be leveling my inscription character first. Jumping into the engineering, we have the Flash Freeze Power Cell, and this one gives you plus elemental damage proc, so basically it's gonna increase your frost damage and produce frost damage for you. That's pretty damn awesome. Also along with that, we also have the Hydrodynamic Accelerator, which this optional piece will actually give you increased swim speed when you're actually using this. Now, I don't really understand how we're going to have swimming in in Shadowlands, but I'm guessing only time will tell when it comes to that if we're actually going to be really required to use this. Now, personally, this would be actually quite handy to actually put on my gear for maybe doing my Azura Veil vale farm. So hopefully that stacks with my other swim speeds so I'll be able to go even faster when I'm on my Druid in Vashir. Now as, along with that we also have the Luxurious Feather. This one actually reduces your full speed damage. So basically when you fall off of a cliff or something it will actually reduce the amount of damage you're going to be taking. So you may not die at the level that you used to if you have this equipped into your gear. Now obviously this is done when you're actually crafting instead of like a buff, like an enchant or something. So optional crafting reagents may be pretty handy when you're actually playing different other characters that don't have a full damage mitigator, which is something like glide or slow fall or any of that line. So if you're like a warrior, you, you can use heroic leap at like the last second, but sometimes you can miss that and you probably will die. So. This is kind of handy if if you are jumping around and doing all of that stuff going forward. Well, only time will tell with this one if it's actually going to be worth it for that. Now along with this we also have the Shadowy Rabbit's Foot. And this one is a great one for all of you speed runners if you actually build this into your crafted gear. Now this one slightly increases your movement speed. Yes, this is pretty damn awesome for all of you speed runners out there. Definitely something that we should actually craft into all of our different types of gear. And um, I'm looking at this and I'm like, I need this on my Demon Hunter, like ASAP. <laughs> because the faster we can actually clear our dungeon, the more runs we can actually get in of a particular type of dungeon or raid, and then vastly increase our gold per hour. Along with this, let's move into blacksmithing. Now for blacksmithing, we only have one crafted reagent that is optional, and that is the Ghoul Slayer's Charm. What this one does when it's actually built into your gear, it gives you bonus damage against mobs. So basically, it's just a bonus damage thing, so if you're fighting something, you're just going to deal uh, a little bit more damage than you usually would. There's no actually preferred stat like versatility, mastery, all that jazz. It basically just uh, states 
you're just going to get an increase in damage. So this could just be basic physical damage that you're actually going to be doing. Now, aside from that, let's move into dual crafting. Now, going into dual crafting, we have the freezing diamond, and this one is another type of crafted reagent and this is for increasing your frost damage. I'm seeing a lot of frost and fire stuff at the moment for resistance and damage and it's really interesting to see that they're bringing stuff and the stuff back from vanilla and bringing it back into the actual game. I wonder if some of the old world buffs are actually going to be viable for placing on some of your characters like overall because then if you could add like frost resist gear and it actually works maybe that's something we could play around with moving forward but that is basically the only thing that is going forward with dual crafting at this moment in time so let's move into leather working now for leather working we have two items which is the loosened belt strap and this and these ones are pretty damn awesome the loosened belt strap however does double the duration of a well-fed effect so obviously when you get well fed you get it for like an hour uh, this actually will double it if you have it on your gear so it's like a one buff type thing so if you placed it on your boots or something or your belt um, <laughs> this is um, this will be very handy for raiders as this will as this will reduce the amount of stuff you'll have to buy off of the auction house to get your well-fed effects as it will last double as long which is very handy for all of you raiders pvpers and all that jazz now along with this we also have the flame licked leather padding and this one increases your fire resistance or fire reduction so to speak so if a fire elemental attacks you you and you've got that on it's basically not going to affect you as much as it would if you didn't have this attached into your gear now this is something that we we could definitely have a play with uh, along with the frost resist and fire um, and frost increases and all that stuff but this one is more catered towards obviously fire because it is flame licked other than that very interesting to see on leather working front and how it's going to go forward now with the now with alchemy however we also have the alchemist's pouch and this one doubles the duration on flasks so obviously this is definitely catered towards raiding um, <laughs> I'm really interested in this one because doubling the duration of your flasks is very handy and if we go back to leather working we it we can have a double effect on your well-fed effects so really they're catering this more towards like your buffs and if you're doubling the duration of your flasks and your well-fed effects then people are going to be spending a lot less gold on their flasks for raid nights and their food and all of that jazz so definitely something to look into when it comes to crafted items i'm deep my opinions are going to come right at the end for crafting and all of that jazz so stick around if you want to hear the rest of them after we've done the last few next one for alchemy we have the bolstering concoction which basically just increases your strength this is the only one that I've noticed that actually tells you flat out right what it actually is going to be doing in step wise and this one is going to increase your strength um, preferably this is quite handy and for alchemy it's basically an all round type thing but it depends on what you're actually going to be crafting it into when it comes to alchemy. Main, maybe when you're crafting a potion or a flask you can then make some potions and flasks that actually increase your strength so definitely something to watch out for in the first couple of weeks until everyone works out which stats are going to be good for that now coming into tailoring however we also have the frozen thread now this one is actually does an increase on frost damage and this is really interesting to see we're seeing a lot of frost damage increases now overall and this is when it comes to dual crafting we have a frost damage increase we have an elemental increase when it comes to engineering we also have for tailoring a, another frost damage increase personally i'm starting to think that frost mage is definitely going to be one of the most viable mage specs going just by looking at the crafted gear at this moment in time i'm seeing this and i'm like damn frost mage is definitely going to be absolutely disgusting if all of this stuff actually goes in line with all of this stuff that's coming in so maybe 
Frost Mage will be one of the top tier DPS classes moving forward just by looking at some of the crafted stuff. Maybe at the beginning Frost Mage will be disgusting, I don't know, but at the end of the day just looking at what's out there and all the crafted gear, this is definitely looking very very viable for Frost Mage and very very promising for someone who, who mains a mage. Overall, we have some other bonus profession stats, and this comes into blacksmithing once again. Now, this one is the lace strike spikes and the lace strike plates. Now, the lace strike spikes works just like you would with a shield spike back in vanilla, and basically, if someone hits you, they take additional damage because of those spikes. And with the lace strike plates, you get bonus armor. This is definitely something to look into when you're actually building your blacksmithing up for all of you who use crafted blacksmithing stuff. So maybe make a shield or a helmet that has additional spikes or shoulder pads and just provide you with or pro and provides the tanks with more armor or a little bit more damage for like Fury Warrior or something along those lines. This is definitely something to watch out for. I'm really, really interested in the way things are going to be panning out. But Overall, let's go into my conclusion. Now, for my conclusion for this, I'm definitely going to be doubling down on Inscription and Alchemy. These ones are looking incredibly profitable. Along with Engineering, I'm actually highly looking into Engineering for a load of different stuff. And personally, just looking at all of this, it's definitely viable to actually even use your Leather Worker as well, mainly for the double durations, professions that you would want to probably get into just by looking at it from a gold making perspective is definitely alchemy for the double duration on flasks, the leather working for the double duration on well fed effects, and inscription for the bonus 20 eye level that comes along with this. Those different types of things that are actually going to be produced from those three professions Definitely something you're going to want to get into when the first raid comes out for the crafted gear because that will most likely be used and that type of stuff will definitely be in demand when it's going forward because you would want double durations on that stuff and you definitely will want bonus eye level. As well as that with your leather working you've also got your your fire reduction or fire resistance which is definitely going to be handy depending on what type of bosses and raids are going to be in dungeons and raids going forward. This is definitely something to jump into overall. I'm really looking forward to the professions overall and I'm actually going to start writing up a plan on my leveling on how which characters I'm going to get to max level first and start making some hefty gold before the first raid comes out. And definitely my characters with inscription, leatherworking and alchemy. Luckily, I only have two characters that have all of those ones, so I only need to really level two characters, plus my miner and my herbalist. And also, we also got a nice little side note on those lay strike spikes. The lay strike spikes are called lay strike spikes, so that means, is it possible that we have lay strike ore? That is something I would love to get some confirmation on and be like, damn, okay, so we've got the first ore that we're going to be actually be able to farm in Shadowlands because I would like to know all of the herbs and ores and skins that we're going to be farming up because then I can make an attack plan on how about I'm going to go about doing this. Like, is it a common quality ore or is it a uncommon quality or just really depends on that type of thing moving forward to see if it's going to be worth a great deal because usually when it comes to like a green ore it's going to be very infrequent when you're actually mining up so we all know it roughly an idea on how much things are going to cost and overall for gold making this is really really handy when you're coming into an expansion because that is where you have the potential to make like gold cap within like the first few months and I know a lot of you would want to hit gold cap uh, going forward on that. Other than that, that is the weekly highlight for the week. Have a lovely rest of the day and I shall see you in the next video which will be tomorrow.